Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to the channel today. We've got a special bit of a treat here today. I'm going to fit the spring kit, or the optional spring kit, to the solo seat on the 2022 model Classic 350. First off, before you even get to this stage of it, to uh, remove your pillion seat, on each side of your shock absorbers, they're 17mm nuts. So all you got to do is loosen them off a bit. Don't take them right off, just loosen it. And then, at the front of that, there's a 12mm bolt at the back part there of the seat. Just undo that one there. And you get that one out of the way, you just pull your pillion seat straight off. Now, when you get the solo seat, same thing again. There's a through bolt, 12mm. And uh, just get there, hook your ratchet onto it, 12mm socket onto it undo it, pull it off, and just remove the seat, pull it straight out towards the back mud guard, and that part's out. It has a fully assembled spring system there on this bike here. This is the uh, touring seat, so that's on the other bike. But if you have a look at what you get, say for example, you've got your main spring, you've got a pair of those, you've got your frame bracket, you've got a washer, bolt to go through. Now when that's all assembled, this is what you've got. You've got, there it is set up like that. I'll swing it over to the other side. You'll see it there. This will be the part here where you'll be putting the uh, bolt through to go into the framework at the back of the bike. So if the bike's setting up like so on the seat, that's the way it'll go in. So there's only those few items there. Then when you swing over here, you've got two over here we've got two high tensile bolts, that one goes through. Then we've got two smaller Allen head ones. Now, in the instructions, I'm pretty sure it says the Allen head ones go into the framework. And I'll just show you where. So, if you look at it here on the back part of the mudguard frame, this Allen head one is going to go into here like so. Now, what I found it, when I tried it, it was very difficult to do and I wanted to do this fitting of it without removing the rear mudguard which is a fair bit of work to take it off and more importantly get it back on and then you don't know once you fool around with mudguards you can bring it back on and then uh, find you've picked up added vibration because it wasn't in the same spot it was before. So the idea, what I did with it, and I'm, like I said I wanted to fit it without removing that guard, I decided this one here, inside the spring, up in that section there, and back to your normal bolts here, they, they go into the uh, framework very really easy, and just put another washer on those, or if you want something like that, and it makes it a lot easier to do the work. Okay, let's get rid of these 10 mil. Now, the seat frame stays, we're only just taking the bolts out. Yeah, okay guys, we'll get this spring in position. A good idea when you're putting this in would probably be the blue lock tight it so that you've got it lined up. Okay, that one's fine. We'll get the other one in there. Okay guys, when you're putting these springs on, make sure they're on the inside. And what I mean by the inside, the inside pointed the spring from here over to there. So if you look at it now, it's on the inside. We'll just use this screwdriver here as a reference. If I turn it around one half revolution, see it's on the outside. We bring it back. There is there. So that's the one you want shortest point between there and that. We've got both springs in there tight now. There's your bracket to the framework. Put it on the outside of the spring. Once again I'll show you. See the recess here? Outside goes in. Ring rear like this. And that should be good enough there at the moment. So if we look at the unit I just pulled off the um, Halcyon Grey. There it is there. 
And if we look at the one we've just done, exactly the same. Apart from that, everything's right on that way. So you got a rough idea now. Remember what I told you about the springs, measure them there to make sure they're the uh, right width. So we'll just do a check from point to point. Say roughly 22 centimeters or about eight and a half inches. So this is the one we've just done. That's about 22, same again, eight and a half inch. So everything's right on that side. We can fit that to the bike now. First thing you to do, protect your rear guard in case you get anything that goes wrong. We've now got the seat here. So if you look at it from underneath, we just got these hanging loose. And up the top part here, this is a recess where we've got to get the tongue from the other one into it. Just going to drop this down into the hole there. Lean back a bit. And I've locked the seat in position now. I've got the seat locked in position. So what I do now is this. I come around here, lift her up. Lift the seat up, bring it into that position there. Lift the other side of the seat up, bring it in position. Put your cross bolt in for the seat. That locks you in position there. Out next is the bolt, which goes into the framework here. I put a washer on it. What I do then is bring a bolt in. Put her in position there. Then you head around the other side, put the bolt in, lift the seat slightly till you line up the hole, like so. Now I've got that one in, I've got that one in, come back here, put me ratchet in and start Tighten her up. Back over to the left. Okay guys, so let's dive in and have a bit of a look at this. You can see now I've got the springs in place. I've got them bolted on this side. This side here, I'm working on the hex screw at the front, tighten it up. Now it's a pretty hard tight fit to get in here and do this. And uh, what I was thinking, what would be a better idea, why not buy an extra bolt with the um, same pattern as this one on it, like so. And Fit that one in the other one where you're not trying to screw something in like here like when you have a look at this one here it's really difficult to get in and line up that's the hardest part of this exercise getting in there on the final run to tighten that one but if you add a hex bolt in it or a um, just a normal bolt put it into this one here just like I did the other one with the washer you'd probably find then it'd be a breeze because you could just get the old ratchet spanner, ratchet it in once, swing down to the bottom one, ratchet it in two, and you'd get out of the way pretty quick. So as you can see now it's on there. I just have to tighten the side here I've got the spanner on. Like so, but it is a really tight fit in there. So uh, unless you had the right one to get into that section there. But there's no doubt, just one more of these bolts, same size, get rid of the other hex one in there because that's a problem you could get it in there and knock it out of the way no trouble at all so it might seem like it takes a long time you know from when I started to finish it but if I was here and I didn't have to worry about video camera causing problems battery going flat GoPro not working checking the sound all the time all the other crap that goes with it. it doesn't take long at all to do this one all you have to do is follow that direction pull that seat off Bring it over to your table. Put all your parts on here. Undo your base plate. Take the nuts off the base plate. 
put your springs onto it like I showed you. Straight down in there, screw that spring in there, screw that one in there. They don't take long at all. Back to this one here, this time put a hex tight bolt on it or some other sort of one compared to this one, it's a real pain. But a normal bolt under that one, same into that slot there. Bring it straight over here, sit down there, cover your back mud guard there with the cloth so you don't damage it. Put your, lift your seat up with, on an angle, push it hard and slap it up against there so the tongue locks in position. Pull it back, lift the seat up, then at the springs, so they go into these points here, onto the frame mount either side. Once that's in, get your um, nut and washer there, lock in either side, and you've got everything right that. Then you've got your new bolts in that position. It can just go in there and tighten them and get the final adjustment. That's how quick it is. It's not, not, not really hard at all. It's just time consuming. It was a bit hard at first when I tried it, but uh, the, the more I've had these seats on and off, the quicker it is. And I think next time at a hardware shop or bolt shop, I'll take one of those smaller ones up there, get two of those, because if you swing to those two bolts at the front, compared to that, what would you call it, a, um, a hex type one, it's not much good at all. It's really difficult to get at, but if you go for two smaller ones, you'll knock it over, no trouble at all, and this will be a breeze. And when you look at it now, you see it there with the spring kit on it. Looks all right. And uh, that idea, that second bolt, it's funny, you know, you go over these a few times and it was only just there at the last moment. I thought to myself, why don't I get a bolt to put at the front instead of that silly hex? And that would make it a lot easier than what it is now. And... Uh, that's what I'll probably do next time out. So hopefully this has been some help to you. Hope you enjoyed this clip. Uh, it'll give you an idea now how to set things up. But I did watch or read, no, I think I watched somewhere where somebody fitted it one to a, a media and put the springs in the wrong way and the seat was lopsided. So, uh, well, that's what he said. So I don't know, maybe right, maybe wrong, but you got the measurements, which way to do it. This idea works for me because I'm better running on both bikes. So the setup I've just showed you does work well. And the only problem is that last hex screw on the, uh, on the final fit. Now the trouble is it's a bit of a problem on this one because it's the factory seat. But if I go over to the hex now with the touring seat, the touring seat sits up a little bit higher and there's a bit more room to put your hands under to get at it and mine up your hex. But with the factory seat, uh, it's a bit more difficult. But that, on the Touring one, you know, you can get there and screw it in no trouble at all. And I was just thinking afterwards while I was having a bit of a drama, getting it back on when I've done it quite a few times, and it's just on the Touring one. For some reason, it sits up a little bit higher, or it appears to sit up a little bit higher, and you've got more clearance behind you. I have noticed that before when I've had the spring seat on this one, and they're both set up the same. And then look back over and see the Touring seat on the other one, you can see the other one's a little bit higher, and... Uh, I think that may be the reason we got a bit more clearance. But anyway, thanks for tuning in. Take a look. Catch you later. Now, if you must continue with the uh, screws, what I've supplied in the kit, and you want what I think is the easiest way to go in it, and there's nothing easy about it, but what I found was a better way. Two fingers straight in behind there like that. Hold your fingers on that bolt you're going to do. Then bring your other spanner in from this side, like so. Come into it like that. You've got your hands and two fingers on this side to hold it and guide it in position and get it going that way. So that would be the easiest way out of it for when you get the two fingers in. But anyway, that's all tightened up there now. You can see it now, nice and tight. So that may help somebody if they're just going to go with the uh, supplied goodies.